Greetings everybody. Welcome to the Morel Jones channel. And this, as some of you know, is the acoustic Morel Jones guitar. It's the third uh, modified guitar instrument that I've made. And uh, this one I've kept so far. And I'm, it's a prototype. I've actually sent it to pictures and uh, description to Gibson, or not Gibson, Taylor Guitars. Seagull, which is what it is. It's a seagull. And um, there's another company I sent it to, but they all responded the same except for Taylor said they really liked the idea. They all said they liked it, but they only take ideas from their luthiers. Um, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying, I've seen other artists with now with morel patterns on their instruments and whatever and fine, blah, blah, blah. But my idea was original. Like I researched it before I, when I was making it, people said, oh, somebody surely done that. We looked it up, there was nowhere. And a year after I'd made it and it was posted on Pinterest on a carving thing, other people made like a little, uh, what do you call it? Like a little tiny guitar with a morel at the top, headstock. But that was a year after I'd already posted and I'd made the thing in like 2011 out of an electric guitar. And it was uh, really cool, it had Ant deer antler carved into uh, the tuning knobs were all morels and the uh, pick pickup selector switch was a little morel, the headstock was a morel, the whole thing was morel pattern. But what I discovered when I did it acoustically was I couldn't really carve the front because this all would gouge out. You can't really see here, but I lost a lot of area trying to re resurface it because I tried to do a little bit here to see how it worked. This is laminated cherry, so it's layered and thick, the sides and back of this particular guitar. What that allowed me to do is gouge into it very deeply and remove a ton of material which left the rigidity and hardness and strength and you know the volume of the instrument but it also opened up the tone woods in a really weird way where this instrument has way more volume than another seagull entourage next to it and it is finger light you know so i was trying to say to gibson and seagull maybe it was fender i know it was taylor because uh Sweetwater, a engineer at Sweetwater directed me towards Bob Taylor, who is interested in things like this, but they, you know, just wanted me to have a low-level job, and I was trying to sell them a prototype and an idea and get in on a thing, you know, because I have more ideas than this, just this pattern, you know. But now other people are taking it, and that's the story of my life, like, and I guess that's kind of what the Morell Jones channel is kind of about, is... I'm a morel mushroom hunting expert, aficionado, and I've been doing that since I was a child. And last year was the first year I went without eating them. I found a bunch, but I gave them away or sold them or whatever just to get by. And um, I didn't get to eat any. And I really missed that. But the connection that people have, like when I got first got on YouTube and had my near-death experience and what I, I saw this video of this girl in India who was picking morels and loved them as much as I do and that just made my heart light up out of a depression because somebody all the way across the world is as is, is happy about finding something to eat as me and I feel like that's a connection that we all share there's no borders no borders there so I like that and that's kind of what you know we're all the Joneses it doesn't matter where you live, you know, there is no race. We're all humans. We all eat. We all enjoy morels. Or cool people all enjoy morels. And, um, and jonesing means you're really wanting something. Like I'm jonesing, people would say they're jonesing for a cigarette. Or they're jonesing for an apple. Or they're jonesing for a guitar. Or they're jonesing for this music. I want to hear some Pearl Jam or some Metallica or, um, some Minaj or whatever you know, whatever you want to hear. And, uh, you know, it's something you're longing for. It's basically what a Jones is, a hard Jones. So I'm Morel Jones when I don't get to eat them. And that's where the name Morel Jones, it was also 
um, somebody was, we talked like I was the Michael Jordan of mushroom hunting, and I was saying I was the Indiana Jones, and I, that's how it just led to Morel Jones. You know, instead of Indiana Jones, because we're in Indiana, I just love Morel, so it just turned into Morel Jones. And uh, after my near-death experience, that's when I started the channel. And uh, the first channel I deleted. It was all music. All I did was songs, and it was going really good. And I think I got an insult, and someone said something really rude, and I just kind of a snowflake like that, and just deleted it all. Got mad and deleted. It was kind of dumb, very immature, you know. And I didn't think about the people who were sticking with me. That's strange, but that's what that's the way it was. Now I have 183 subscribers on this channel. Thanks, you guys. All 183 of you. Isn't that cool? Um, they've got about 100 videos. And um, I don't know what we're going to do in the future. We're a pedestrian channel. We do all things about walking, hiking, um, mushroom hunting, shed hunting, you know, all these things that require you to walk around mountains or fields or whatever to walk around. You've got to walk around and get stuff. And I've walked across country. I've turned into my mushroom hunting, me having a big mouth and blabbing my spots and giving away mushrooms and when you sell mushrooms the buyers follow you and they send their hunters there and pick you out and then you gotta find a new spot. This happens over and over again. And if you're a really good hunter, no property hunter will let you hunt. None. They know your name. Counties. You know, you won't get in. So you gotta hunt public land with everybody else. And then everybody hates you like, oh you're selling them or something. So it's, it's a real hard thing to be good, you know, to be an expert. I'm good at it. I'm, I'm really good at mushroom hunting. So that led to me walking all over Macinawa Reservoir. Like I walked the borders of the whole place. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but I'm proud of that. Go do it. Pick a, pick a property section and walk it around the roads, around the reservoir, around the creeks, around the other roads, around where you started. That's, that's one section done. And do that to every section around the whole thing. And then you'll, you'll know what I mean by briars and thatch and Indiana jungle. Because it's terrible. It's horrible. It's not fun. But you find antlers and mushrooms and berries and you know raspberries, blackberries, things like that. Whatever you like. You can find lots of things. Um, but that led to me when I had my near-death experience, like, you know, like, I, I just have this want to go. I just want to walk, like, like I was meant to go walk this thing, and that, in my near-death experience, I was told about this walk. Like, anyway, okay, here we are. Now we're, now we're the Morel Jones channel. And if you guys want to see any of the walk, it's pretty, it's not exactly chronologically ordered in the videos, but it's pretty close. You know, you've got my videos from the old channel of my old uh, apartment where I'm playing the guitar before I Morel Jones did and after. And there's videos about that happening. You know, that's all the transition of the time of when I was moving out of that apartment at Riverbend Apartments where my near-death experience with a brand new GE stove didn't happen. And um, I, where do I where do I want to go? And then I, I I thought I had an apartment in Michigan and got out of there too soon and had to live with family because I was pretty much in between housing and they weren't gonna let me move back in there because they don't like me and uh, I'm a little more rowdy than I used to be or whatever I guess. But anyway, I I'm an active person. So. But here's what I've got so far on my book. It's called The Popper's Path, No Wheels, uh, 2021, April to June 22. So that's April, uh, you know, that's because I did the Michigan walk nine days at the end of May to June or whatever when I did that. And I did some other walking in there. It's To Know and Show the Kindness of Strangers, The Popper's Pop Path by Paul M. Sylvain, The Morel Jones Channel. Uh, oh, no, there it is. And, and that, that's going to be like, that's how I would like the book presented and, you know, on a rant, if they'll let me do it, the Road Atlas or whatever as the cover, you know, like just like this. Because what I've done is I, when I, I wrote the book two or three times now and I've ripped it up and burned it because I reveal stuff that is 
personal and I don't want to reveal it. But yeah, I've done things like this, like here's, here's what we've done. Uh, over 100,000 feet climbed in elevation, 10 states walked through or across. Pauper's Path, 2021 to 2022, and four long walks. One was 22 days, one was 44 days, one was 88 days, and the other one was nine days. Um, that's 17 point some miles a day average in 163 days. No rides, no wheels, 20, 2,800 miles. That's pretty good for an old man near 50, right? <laughs> um, and you can see, uh, let's see, to go and show the kindness of strangers. The, that's how I'd like it, you know, the front and back. That would be cool, I think, as, a, as the book cover. Uh, a story of one lonely soul on one of the roads that must be walked and known. Kindness. Always carry kindness. Easier said than shown. Let's go. <laughs> or let go. So that's, you know, that's that. Uh, of course, you know, this is just this is just the rough draft. This isn't something you're going to be able to go buy. Also, you know, I don't talk about add in the walks I did in California when I was out in San Francisco. Hello, Valerie. I don't remember. Hello, David. Hello, Michael. Hello, Mike. Hello, Chumash. Hello, Dennis. Hello, everybody out there in California, you guys. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then yeah, there's some rough stuff happened in there, but yeah, I walked from I walked from Oakland to Emeryville, from Emeryville to Berkeley, from from Berkeley back to Emeryville. Then I went from got a train ride into San Francisco, walked all over San Francisco, and I got a ride to the uh, on the bus. I rode the trolley thing or whatever to where I was closer to the Golden Gate Bridge, and I got into one of the and there was a big park south but there was one bigger one showing going north so I went toward the Marin headlands and walked all through there and walked to Muir Beach and then Stinson Beach is where I ended that little path and then I took a bus up to the campgrounds and stayed there and walked down to Muir Woods and walked in the Redwoods and stuff and around the mountains there and then uh, went back to San Francisco back across the Golden Gate Bridge I'm a uh, what they call it? I, was it a two-timer? I forget what it is, but I've crossed it twice there and back. So that, that was one of my favorite bridges to walk. And then I took the, the train back. And the way I got there was I stayed with a friend at Colorado. I guess I jumped around there a bit. It's because I got to California. See, here's Colorado. I stayed at Gary's for a week. Or, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Sorry, man. I stayed at a friend's for a week. I'll bleep that out. <laughs> in Denver, and I explored Denver, like I walked, there's trails you can walk to Colorado Springs or you can walk uh, to Fort Collins, I think, all the way if you want to. It goes on and on and on. I don't know what trail that is, but it goes forever. I walked all that. I walked downtown Denver. I was scared of my friend. He's like, I, can't. I had him walking downtown. He had a walker. Vietnam vet walking downtown with me in Denver through the hood. <laughs> it was awesome. But anyway, uh, and here's where I started when I went from Miami to Michigan. And that's the pauper's path that I did there. And I, I've got all my steps through each of our states. Florida, there's how I walked through your state. See, I walked all over Miami. And now I started January 18th back this way, but I think I started walking on the 17th or something. I got off the bus on the 17th and I didn't get back in a vehicle until April, um, almost to Plymouth, Indiana. I walked to Lake Michigan and then walked back to Plymouth. And that's when I got a two mile ride to Walmart. And there's the path I went through Georgia. They're getting my rails right now. I just seen a YouTuber from Georgia that uh, she's finding morels over here somewhere. I won't say where, but she's over here. <laughs> she's a caver, awesome channel, check her out. I wish I could remember her name off the top of my head so I could plug her channel, but yeah, that's the path I took up through there, through Atlanta. Um, some stuff happened at Atlanta. Some good stuff and some bad stuff, you know, it's a big city. 
Um, let's see. There's when I walked my first path. Now this is a big thing here is where when I made when I walked west, I didn't get in the vehicle until I was here at Roseville when I made it to the county line and the lady's dogs attacked me. And then I, that I pulled out a knife and I pulled out my alcohol spray. It was biting me and it got off my pants or whatever. So I, sp I sprayed it in the eyes and kind of took my knife at it and it yiped like I stabbed it. I didn't stab it. They thought I stabbed it and sprayed it with mace. So the police searched me for mace and a gun and all this other stuff and said that I was in danger by these people who were like kind of he's like they're pretty mad at you like whatever you did or said they're after you like I'm like okay well that's not very good when you're out walking he's like yeah where do you want me taking and I'm like nowhere I'm walking he was a real good cop and he didn't tase me or anything he handled it perfectly like professionally as heck and uh, he took me to I don't remember what it was called he, he took me to a different city where Dallas, was it Dallas City? I don't remember what it was, but I had to backtrack is what I worked out. I walked back to Roseville and then back down, but I still got in a vehicle there. So I just, you know, if a, I had, I, you know, and that's where I kind of broke my spirit. That was my first walk. I made it almost all the way across the fat part of Illinois, east to west, and here a cops make it, you know, I'm getting in a vehicle with a cop and it ruined the whole thing in my head, even though it was for safety reasons or whatever. I didn't sit well with me. And from there on, it just rained. Like when I got to Fort Collin or Fort Madison, it just rained and rained and rained. Like maybe I had a little break walking down this train track and talked to a bull that was, uh, you know, looking for trespassers on the train track with me, I guess. But uh, he, he rode along the track, drove with me, got off, let the train go by for a ways. And uh, it didn't rain then. As soon as he left, it rained. But uh, I, that's when I met people in Iowa and they really helped me out. But I was really down, like I had failed. My leg was swollen up, was edemic. I think my kidneys were, I probably wasn't drinking enough water. I didn't know enough about hiking. Like I didn't know how to keep my gear from mildewing and molding. I didn't know where to sleep so much. And there is nowhere out there. There's like just wide open fields. So you got to sleep by a corn silo or something, you know? And people drive right up to you with their lights on and stuff. It's scary. But, you know, that's part of what I was doing. So I think when I met them, I wasn't really fully engaged with partying with them or getting to know the people or enjoying the moment. It's kind of tied to a failure. And I know that sucks for them because they were, are golden, awesome people. And I could, I'd like to, I'd almost want to live there if I didn't have this. That's where I failed. Like, I should I was trying to walk all the way to California without a ride. And when I went to Ohio, actually, the same thing happened. Oh, here's the Indiana one. See, no rides on any of that. That's all. Isn't that a cool cross? And that's another story I can tell. Is when I was in Peoria, Illinois, I watched the news in a hotel when I rented, got a hotel room for a night and got a shower. And uh, they, there was a guy named Tom who does a Tom's Walk who does this across Illinois. 150, 100 miles this way and 50 miles this way, which is probably about that big. So I did, you know, he kind of inspired me. Like, that's what I did. I did the whole state of Indiana. And all these walks are different walks I did besides, you know, when I went this walk, that walk, and this walk. So it's a lot to explain, but yeah, that's where I made it um, in Iowa through, you know, I went through, I don't know, very little of Iowa, like basically the little part that goes down, and I got in Missouri because I met someone who told me to take 136, and I thought he said 136, which isn't a road you want to walk on. It was very dangerous. But... There's the path through Kentucky, and see that's basically that's basically what I did. I, I you know, and th there's my nine days it took me to walk across Michigan. <laughs> uh, 
See, I also, what I don't include is I walked up there to do that. And then I walked down to uh, almost, it wasn't Toledo, it was right before whatever tent, LaSalle, Michigan, I think. And then Mike picked me up, he's a firefighter, thank you Mike. And he took me into in Toledo, and then I walked across that big blue bridge and went down to the bus station. There was no bus that would take me. There would, I couldn't get a ticket for three days, and it wasn't a nice place. There was lots of those drug addicts I was talking about earlier. So I had to leave that part of Toledo. So I started walking back home to Indiana from Ohio, and I made it to Maumee, I think. And this guy named Bob picked me up and took me all the way to Fort Wayne to Bob Evans and bought me Bob Evans breakfast. Man, he was so cool to me. Thank you, Bob. And then I walked through Fort Wayne and made it to like Huntington and then some gals picked me up. The Scott sisters, the Doobie sisters picked me up and took me, they took me to, uh, do you know where they dropped me off? They dropped me off at Peru truck stop. So that's like on the other side of Wabash to the Peru truck stop. So yeah. It's a, it's a lot to talk about. Yeah, let's see, there's Missouri. See, there's my path into Missouri. And that's where I started taking rides out west. And like I said, once I got in there, in that vehicle with that cop, and then I got a ride from my friends I made in Iowa, and then I got a ride here from this guy named Mike, and he took me all the way to New Mexico. I stayed in New Mexico with them for a while. Then he dropped me off at Colorado friends in Colorado. And then I took the Zephyr to uh, California because they wouldn't let me walk the mountains because it was too early. It was Memorial Day and they said I couldn't start walking where I wanted to till it was like the snow passes weren't melted till July. And my friend said, you are not staying here till July. <laughs> I was having way too much fun in Denver. <laughs> we had to get me out of Denver. And I spent some time out east with some family in New Hampshire and Maine. That was awesome. But I didn't walk there. I, I took a train and then a bus. And then I took the uh, bus home. Or maybe I took a train out. No, I took a bus home from New York. But yeah, there's where I've walked through uh, part of Pennsylvania all through New Jersey and into New, how I got into New York City and then I'm not sure where I went I went all over New York City but I'd just hit some sort of like somebody would say like what are you smiling at <laughs> or something like that and I just walk the other way <laughs> like okay they don't like people who smile in the city <laughs> and I think I got that yelled at me maybe 50 60 times in New York I don't know you guys figure it out. I know you don't like that word, but that's what they were saying to me. And see, I tried to draw it all out where I've been. <laughs> and I think I was trying to get to where I'd end up out here is where I wanted to end up. But like, I would get to certain bridges and you couldn't walk certain bridges. And I walked bridges, enough bridges to where I couldn't do it anymore. I'd get trespassing. And sadly, when I made it to the Statue of Liberty, they were trying to say I had a bomb because I was cooking coffee with my MSR rocket, pocket rocket, and it was close to 9-11, and they were trying to act like I was some terrorist with a backpack to blow up shit. <coughs> threw it all, threw it all over the place, and I was just broken. I mean, I'm like, I'm walking for a charity, and, and it, you know. And they were saying I was in the park early, but there was all kinds of people running right by us that are rich, that they aren't arresting them or doing anything to them, but I gotta get out of the park. So I got really bitter, and that's when I started having trouble keeping negativity off social media, like both sides of it. The drug addict stuff, like people trying to rob me, and the rich goody two-shoe people like in Miami where I go into my hotel my brother got me a nice hotel room and they won't let me in because I'm a, I'm a homeless idiot right I'm a vagrant so I can't go in my hotel room every time I go in there I gotta show my ID and a card and I gotta go through this whole process of being ashamed of who I am and the way I look it sucked and I don't you know I don't know what like being a different race is or anything but I think I know what shame is and I think I know what it feels like to be ashamed of how I look and what my body is and what my skin looks like and 
you know, how big things are on my body. I know what that shame feels like, you know. So all, of, all the people out there feeling fat and ugly, at least you can do a sit-up and change that, right? You, you can take an action to change it. I don't think I can change these things on me, on myself. I am a man. I can't change that. Even if they get mutilated, I'm still a man. Oh, now, oh, I got all off track. But yeah, this is the way I walk through Pennsylvania. And I don't recommend walking through Pennsylvania on the roads, east to west. It is not easy. Because if you think driving I, I-80 or whatever it is, the interstate is rough, which it is, it's not a fun drive, try walking it. Because you can't walk on that road. You have to walk the goat trails. It was awesome. Love Pennsylvania. And there's my path through Ohio. Which I'm, uh, is that Ohio? No, that's Pennsylvania. Ohio to Pennsylvania, which right here is where they had the train wreck. And right here's where I walked through. Isn't that weird? Uh, it's weird. I got robbed down here in Pittsburgh at the bus station for 40 bucks. My gun point or whatever. But up at this, up here, I can walk around. I get robbed down here. No, I don't like Pittsburgh. <laughs> Just because I got robbed, you know. Okay. But whatever, you know. Okay, that's how I walk through. Pennsylvania, made it into, this is Easton, yeah, here we are, Easton, that's where I crossed into, uh, would be New Jersey, Easton's a pretty rough town, like all that right there, I'll say, it's, you know, it's, you gotta have your head on the swivel a little bit, it was cool though, it was a really cool spot to cross. And of course, all the interviews I have of strangers ties to what I'm showing you. You know, it's all linked together. It can all, you can even watch the, uh, look at the state I'm pointing out here in the path I took, and you can go, you know, see, oh, this is the town is here this, this time, or whatever, you know. And here's the other thing. I, I walked through across 10 states, walked or hiked in over 20 states in one year from 2021 to 2022, April to April. Also hiked many trails besides what is mentioned, same year, 1,500 miles or so. Also walked to all appointments and shopping with one rental car a day a month, every other month to do errands and stuff. That's, you know, when I get a break and I pretty much drive the whole time I have the car, like do all my shopping or know get anything heavy that I can deal with with my backpack <laughs> which is a really useful thing and there's the cross I made across America which when you add the Michigan one it looks kind of weird but I still want I still made it try to do around the lake so it'll be a big circle and then I, maybe I should do Wisconsin that way and it'll look pretty cool it'll be a cool little cross thing and that you know that was about a 355 mile without ride walk. That was 197 across Michigan, the 771 from Indiana to New York, and 1457 from Indiana to Lake Michigan. But I also walked back to Indiana, which, you know, that, and that's, uh, I don't know what that total is. It's a lot. That's what I've done. And what we're gonna do is, I'm thinking, I might try to go stay with my friends and then get dropped back off in Roseville and try to make it to California. And then I'll have to walk literally like north and south and east and west, the whole country roads on the roads. And, um, and we're, I'm, I think I'm gonna skydive next month if the weather's permitting. That should be pretty fun. We're gonna check that out. And uh, I've got like four roller coasters I want to hit at Cedar Point. Uh, then I'm probably going to start walking again. But uh, like I said in the other video, anybody that sent anything to the 1502 P.O. Box, please comment on that channel and let me know because I haven't received anything. And there's two or three of you that I really would like to get a 
card from to have your address. Shay, if you're watching this, could you please send me a postcard with your new address? I have your old address, but I fear if I send it, your gift to you, it won't make it to you there. And I think I might be able to dig up your number. I have it wrote down somewhere, but um, that's all I think of. Uh, Himalayan Soul, Doctor, uh, if you could, Avidish Pandit, Dr. Pandit, if you could send me a postcard to that P.O. box that was on the channel, I'd appreciate it. I have something to send you as well. Um, and I think I can get a hold of everybody else I have gifts for. So, But that P.O. box will be closed, unfortunately, because someone else is checking it, is going up to the desk and asking for that mail. So please don't send anything to it. And um, if anybody has any suggestions of what, you know, maybe I could, I was thinking the PCT or AT, the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail, but that isn't really my cup of tea. There's a, you know, I have a lot of quirks and, you know, people can misinterpret things and I'm not into their snobbery and some of the way they, just uh, some of the things that goes on there, I don't, I don't like some of it, you know. And it's a bit of overcrowding of one trail. You know, there's plenty of fields along our roadways and ways to do it where there's, you know, a dollar general every 50 miles everywhere you go so you can get water at Dollar General. <laughs> but, um, yeah, maybe I should do a video about them dangers when you're road, a road warrior, what you should look out for. But, uh, all right, everybody be safe. Have a safe spring. Collect many morels and deer antler sheds if you can. And, um, remember, if you want one of these, you just got to find a Chinese bittersweet. It grows from down south clean up into Canada, and it's not easy to find these. It grows in areas where there is clear cut off, where they've cleared woods and the young stuff comes up, but there has to be bittersweet in there because it just seems to be the one that does the best twisting up with those, you know, bittersweet. I guess you can get poison ivy if you want. All right.